to the Automaton Series EV. A new arm cannon, a titanium chassis, and new defenses. It looks like our hero's childhood friend got an upgrade. Eve 2's integrated arm cannon dispels heat, enabling her to deliver damage in a dazzling array of shot patterns based on the weapon canister she equips. When she wants to deliver an added punch, she charges up her arm cannon to release even more devastation. Each weapon canister changes the effect. With her proton beam, EV2 places a series of nodes to zap and slow her enemies. The result is geometric destruction of limitless possibilities. Her reflect beam turns back all enemy projectiles and launches an energized torpedo that travels from node to node, detonating at each stop. She uses her buff beam to create a line of energy that increases the attack speed and damage of all defenses in its path. EV2's weapon manufacturer utilizes digital printing technology to create weapons of mass destruction. Here, EV2 lays down a series of nodes that debuffs and damages enemies. Every enemy terminated inside fuels a device. Once full, the Atomic Launcher, or Mega Death Laser, will be ready for use on the battlefield. The results are historical. Her anti-gravity bots hover where she places them until shot, causing them to detonate. Place them close to cause a chain reaction few will survive. With her Death From Above ability, she launches into the air, leaving a holographic decoy behind. While airborne, she rains destruction on enemies below, fooled by her technological trickery. EV-2's proton charge blasts forth a powerful particle beam, melting her enemies. EV-2's heal helps with repairs, preventing her life systems from disconnecting and rejuvenating her battle armor. Each of EV-2's abilities generates heat instead of using mana. So be careful not to overheat. If your hero deck is in need of a little mass destruction, look no further than Series EV2. A long time ago, there lived a young man who ruled in a peaceful, magnificent land. But one sudden day, his attitude drifted, and the smile on his face abruptly shifted. He changed all the rules, paying no heed to the ones who warned him of his menacing greed. So in a desperate attempt, the townspeople met and planned their revenge, which they knew they would get. They gathered their torches and marched to the man whose greed and sloth got way out of hand. But aware of the threat, the young man fled for fear of losing his precious head. For hours he ran without looking back until he was approached by a figure in black. There's no need to hurry, the dark figure said. I'll offer you a deal so you don't wind up dead. Confused by the offer, the young man declined. But the dark figure knew how to change his mind. I'll give you a town to rule as you wish in exchange for your sanity which I'm sure you won't miss. The young man agreed, showing a grin. He now had a town where he could peacefully sin. But just when he thought that the deal was all ready, the dark figure spoke 
his voice quite unsteady. There is a slight catch, I'm regretful to say. My deal works at night, not during the day. But don't be alarmed, I'll make it worthwhile. I'll find you more people who also don't smile. They'll live in your town and appear to be nice, attracting more victims who wouldn't think twice. And then when it's dark, your fun can begin, and violence and rules can be made on a whim. And with those spoken words, the young man stood still, unable to move from this overwhelming thrill. For in the dark distance, his town was already. The only thing left was a leader who was steady. So he got straight to work, creating a split between the ones who have money and those who have zip. For what better way to establish a war than to live in a hellhole with those you abhor? Kootalot, the Foul Fleet is a point and click adventure game full of swashing, buckling, and combining one inventory item with another inventory item to create a third new inventory item. Oh, fascinating. The game began as a birthday present for my girlfriend and just got out of hand, to be honest, and became an adventure game. I wanted shoes! What a lucky lady. The game features a smashing voice cast, including Tom Baker as Nelly's sidekick, Sebastian. Sebastian, go and poo on their heads or something. Nelly, I'm not going to poo on everyone you tell me to poo on. The game is full of drama, 
What's the Baron up to? I know not what he's plotting, but I foresee many innocent birds be perishing. <laughs> birds hate perishing! The game is full of intrigue. Remind me, why won't you go shirtless? I told you before! No test air, eh? The game is full of romance. The Nautical Misconceptions lecture series continues. This month, the poop deck and the booby hatch. Alright, there's not that much romance, but there are jokes and puzzles that will amuse and delight whether you're 9, 19 or 90. But only those ages. So, please join me in launching Nelly Coutelot, the Foul Fleet. Anchors away! Ow, my hand's caught in the chair! <laughs> how, how has this happened? <laughs> Eco is an online world shared by a group of students in which they're trying to build a civilization. Uh, everything they do in this shared world affects their environment, so it takes place inside of a simulated ecosystem. They need to use resources that are available in the environment, but if they do so in a way that doesn't give much thought to the consequences, they could have a negative effect on this environment and actually damage or destroy this world that they're all sharing together. So in Ego, the goal isn't to save the environment or protect the environment. The goal is to build. 
The goal is to create a civilization. But in order to do that, secondarily, the ecosystem comes into play. The ecosystem simulation within the world is modeled after the biomes in the Pacific Northwest. So as players are hunting or logging, they're going to affect the underlying simulation and the ecosystem and those population dynamics are going to respond in a realistic way. The world of eco belongs to the whole group. Everybody's sharing this world together. And you have to make decisions as a group as to what should happen to this world. So in order to do that, we've built tools in ECO that allow players to propose laws. So because ECO is based on a simulation of plants and animals, we're generating tons of data that we're able to share with the players. The players can collect this data in the game and they can use that in their uh, argumentation. So every law in ECO needs to be backed up by scientific argumentation. It's based on the actual data that's coming from the game. So once a law is proposed, players can have these really rich discussions online as to what's the, the right way to go about this. It's official. The elks are extinct. Because I just made a graph and looked at their population. Eco uh, is a game that runs on a server in the cloud, and that means that we're running the game simulation all the time. And the students can sort of jump in and out whenever they want. Um, they can play in the classroom or at home. The classroom time is kind of the, the chance to have a council meeting. That's where you're discussing with your peers what should be done in this world. And this is where we see the role of the teacher becoming really important, that they are guiding this discussion. In order to support teachers as they integrate ECO into their class instruction, we're developing a series of teacher tools. These tools will allow teachers to see everything that's happening in ECO in real time. Teachers will be able to use these tools to set specific scenarios so that specific learning objectives aligned to the different next generation science standards can be addressed. I see it as a game that we can start maybe at the beginning of an ecology unit, but something that we could come back to in the classroom and revisit maybe once a week um, and they can see how things are changing and definitely something that ideally they'd be able to access at home and then as a class, when we have a chance to revisit it as a whole class later on again in the week, we can take a look at those changes that were made and maybe who made changes and why and how that's impacting the environment. Another great advantage of, of games is that we can give this, this accelerated view of time and consequences. So you, we can have an ecosystem that you know runs fast forward from reality basically. So you get many years worth of consequences of human actions within this time span of a few days. Eco is a fragile world. It's a simulated ecosystem that can die if players don't take care of it. Species can go extinct in this game. You can lose access to food and resources, which would destroy this world that players have spent weeks building on it. There's just this ownership to this world. You care about this world because it's important to you. And to have this game set in a world that can be damaged, that can be affected by your decisions if you don't work together to understand the effect of the ecosystem, that really just adds a lot of meaning to everything you're doing. It puts it in this context that actually matters to you. It gives this view to the player that they, they wouldn't necessarily have otherwise.